As a land of the Barbie, it has to be the great wide open of Australia. And here, just outside Sydney, they're all at it. Just after the war, people arrived in their masses from all over the globe, and their cooking heritage created a multicultural melting pot of flavours. Just look at this. It's fun and games for everyone here at Bronte Beach, where people cook at coin-operated public barbecues to knock up sizzling grub that reflects cosmopolitan Australia. You like that? What have you done with this? Just put some salt on top of it and... Only salt on the top, yeah. a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. and lemon sugar, that's finished. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and how often do you come down? Do you come down quite a lot here? No, it is our first time. It's your first time to do a bit of barbecuing. <laughs> It doesn't all have to be meat, and you vegetarians are in for something extra special. My barbecued vegetable loaf, and boy does it taste good. First I want you to get a nice large glass bowl, and then some olive oil. Bit of a chance for you to get your extra virgin out here, if you know what I mean. There you go. And pour that in there, look at that. Quite a bit of it, quite a bit of that oil, all the way into your bowl there. Then I want you to get a nice handful of basil, chop that up, and the same with the parsley. There you go, all of that goes inside there. Three or four cloves of garlic, just chop those up and throw those in. Quite a bit of salt. And of course, some pepper too. Look at those lovely nuggets of pepper. And this is the fun part. Get your fingers in there and give that a bit of a swirly. Swirl that around. Oh, and the flavor. Oh. <laughs> Then I want you to take your vegetables, and here I've got red peppers, yellow peppers, and courgettes. Just take those and pop them inside your marinade, and then swirl those around. Really get your fingers in there. Oh, lovely. Get those shoulders working inside those courgettes. <laughs> there you go. And lift them up and pop them onto your barbie. Now, don't forget, if you're doing a barbie, it doesn't have to be like this, one of the electric barbies. You can do it on your barbecue at home. Make sure, though, that you have nice medium coals. You don't want it too hot, otherwise all the little bits of oil that drip off there will fire up and then will burn your veggie. You don't want that. Now you take your aubergines there. Now you've noticed I haven't soaked in my marinade because they love to soak up the oil. So what you want to do is just brush them through and then slap them straight onto your barbie. There they go. Oh, just look at that. Isn't that lovely? Gorgeous. Now for my red onions. Not sliced too thickly, but also no oil on them. Straight onto your barbie dry and let them get that lovely sort of caramelization going. There they are. Beautiful. Onions all the way around. Delightful. And just let that all sort of sizzle down. Now onto my bread because that's where it all goes into and that's the whole point of this. Now what you're going to do is just slice off the top of that. You can see the way I've done that. And then inside, I've run my knife just around the rim there, and then you get your fingers in and have a good old claw session. That's it. Really pull that around. Now, don't be frightened to really tear into that, because this is a nice, firm cob. You know, you want a nice, rustic loaf. That's it. Really get in there and take all of that out. And don't forget all these pieces of bread here, the chunky bits. You can just chop those up and throw them onto the barbie, and that could be used as like croutons to go on top of a salad or something. So nothing goes to waste. You may even want to soak them in a bit of the old marinade first. That's nice. Now, I'm going to take the rest of the marinade there, all the, that oil and everything, so it really spread that all the way around. So it just kind of soaks it up into the bread, into that cob there. Now, some tapenade. Go to your supermarket, ask for tapenade. It can be green or it can be the black olive that they've used. And you just take that and then spread that. Really give that a good old spread there. Just using the body there, just moving a little bit. Perhaps you have your favourite music out there in the garden. Do, 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 do. Spreading around, that's it. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely beautiful. Make sure it's well coated there. That's it. Let's turn over our vegetables. Oh, that's beautiful. OK, now I'm going to take a nice peppery rocket. Again, on the vegetable shelf in the supermarket there, you get that lovely rocket. Just lay that inside on the bottom there. That's it. All of that goes in there. Now you're going to get those aubergines. 
Uh, that's it. And pop those on top. Now, look over here. I've got some mozzarella cheese. Just lay it down there. Isn't that beautiful? It's all building up now. Begin to understand all those lovely flavours going on there. Red peppers going on top. Look at the colour of them. They're sort of glistening, aren't they, in the sun. Delightful. And the yellow peppers, they go on top there. Lovely singe to them there. The red onions go on top. And of course, the courgettes. Just lie the courgettes on top of that again. And look, you can imagine when you cut into that, all the different contrast of flavors, the aubergine, the red peppers, the yellow peppers, and of course, the courgettes and the onions, all layered beautifully. And we're gonna finish it off with a drizzle of the old extra virgin. There you go. Spread with a bit more of the tapenade on top like that. That's it. And then pop the lid on top. Then you take your whole loaf, you wrap it all in cling film, really give that a good wrap. Take a wooden board, place that on top, and a couple of those cans of every, whatever you've got in your larder, place those on top so it compresses down and spreads and distributes all those wonderful flavours. And 24 hours later, boy, are you in for an exceptional treat. Well, that's got the old taste buds going. But for the real authentic taste of Australia, you have to trek deep into the scorchingly hot dust ball of the outback. I pictured a rainbow. You held it in your hands. I had flashes. Breathtaking, isn't it? Mount Connor, one of the most sacred sites of the Aborigines. Do you know there's just the oldest living culture in the world? And for a taste of their traditional bush tucker, my guide, scientist Vic Cherikov, a gourmet of native Ozgrub. Oh, Vic, it's so hot. I mean, it's such a hostile environment here. How, how do people survive? What do they eat? What do they eat? Well, you just have to know what to eat. I mean, there is a lot around, and in different seasons, there's different foods. There's plum bushes around. There's um, Kwandong just down there, which is a beautiful desert peach. Oh, bush yeah, tomatoes. Yeah. I'm sure it is. It is. It's <laughs> fabulous. Um, late at night, you'll uh, in, in the dusk, you'll find the kangaroos hopping through here. There's snakes and lizards. Snakes and lizards? <laughs> I saw a snake on right up the tree. No, 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 the snakes around here can climb trees. Now, you've got to go chase them, grab them, hit them over you the head. Be they taste really nice. It sort of tastes like the brown meat of chicken. Here we go, that's about to catch. Them. I was expecting an open fire, billy cans and camp ovens for tips on how to barbecue kangaroo which incidentally is bouncing its way onto British menus. But first, it was cooked the Aboriginal way, a whole roux singed and then buried deep into the earth. Watch your shoes. Yeah, I will do that. That is a hot fire. It's gonna be at around 700 degrees. Luckily though, it cools down fairly quickly. Left overnight, oh, it was ready to taste. Look at that. Nice and rare. Tender? And nice and tender too. Oh, that is brilliant. Meal fit for a king. Mmm. Ainsley, I'm going to show you a great way of cooking kangaroo now with paper bark. It's a swamp tree, you peel the outer layer, and uh, that you can wrap chicken, fish, but we're going to wrap a kangaroo steak. The first thing, you use this kangaroo meat. It's as lean as can be, high protein, low fat. This is going to go into an oiled camp oven just to sear off. And we'll just turn it to sear the, both sides and it seals in the juices. All right, we now need a piece of paper bark. Instead of using paper bark, I could probably sort of wrap it in vine leaves or something with some foil. Or cabbage leaves and then foil on the outside. OK, that kangaroo's done. Onto the paper bark and we simply tie it up as a parcel. The idea is uh, to keep the paper bark a little bit moist so that we can actually bend it and it doesn't break. And there's the parcel. And then all that happens there is goes into the camp oven and the idea is to really blacken the sides. The camp oven's nice and hot. Check that out. Oh, lovely. So that's in. We're now gonna do a sauce with it. I've already prepared some stock, some port, a little bit of vinegar, and that's just going onto the fire to reduce. 
And in there, we will be adding some condong. Condong is a native peach. You can use apricot or peach as a substitute if you want. Where do you get your, your port and stuff like that from out here? You bring it with you. <laughs> and then, just in keeping with our East Meets West tradition, we'll put in a little bit of ginger. All right, we'll just leave that cook a little while. Just here cooking the side of the fire, I've got a real special treat. Have a sausage. That's not a sausage, Vic. No, you're right, it's a witchetty grub. It's a real delicacy of the Aborigines. They ate it all around the country, even used it to wean their children. What do you think? Mmm. Quite sort of nutmeggy, really. Well, they're very rich, actually. High protein, high fat, they're really good for you. Very interesting. And uh, we can even use these to garnish the, uh, the dish as it comes together. Now what are these over here, Vic? They're Johnny Cakes, made with just flour, powdered milk, a little bit of salt and water, mix it up into a soft dough. And we've added a couple of bush flavours. First off, this is lemon myrtle. Look at the colour of that. Beautiful green herb. It's one of the native herbs which are now reaching the world as a brand new flavour. Smells great, tastes like lemon, lime and lemongrass. That just gets mixed in. And we've all got to have greens with our meat, so we're going to cook off some Warrigal greens. You can use English spinach as a substitute, but these uh, are native spinach. One of the first foods that Captain Cook ate with Joseph Banks when he discovered, well, discovered a country that was never lost. So they just go into the billy, and in the billy also I've got some bunion nuts. Right, the bunion nut is an Australian chestnut, and uh, the meat will pop out, the nut meat will pop out of the shell as it boils, and it's almost like a potato substitute. And our sauce is just about done, kangaroo's looking good, we might as well plate it up. It's well black, isn't it? It's well black. well black. Now the big trick here is how you present it to stop the plate getting very, very black. So what we do here to stop the bark from going all over the plate, we cut off the edges, we can throw them away. You can dust off your plate a little bit. Now it's important, easy to always rest game meat because that tends to increase the softness, the tenderness of the meat. And it's been resting in that paper bark parcel. What I may do simply to dress up the plate, we'll serve it all on paper bark, which is a fairly traditional method as well. We'll just slice it through. Oh, look, it's beautifully cooked. Oh, okay. My Warrigal greens have blanched. Now, we're eating this straight off, so that could actually go into cold water just to retain the colour. All this on a barbie, Vic. All, All this, this on, on a barbie. barbie in the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. Right down the bottom of our pot, I'll go fishing. There's a bunion nut or two. Now, bunion nuts are incredibly filling. Basically one nut and you've got all the starchy carbohydrate you need. So we now need our Kwandong sauce. That adds even more colour there beautifully and some of our sauce just over the meat. Okay, now we'll go a little bit challenging. A couple of the grubs. Bit of the Johnny cake to finish bush food, a la camp oven and wildfire. Barbie supper. It looks good enough to eat, Vic. Well, eat it then. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Bit jumpy this meat, Vic. Tender enough? Oh, lovely. For out here in the wild, Vic, this tastes so good. Australia revels in a riot of produce and wine, and here, in the Hunter Valley, they've got the lot. Brian McGrigan is one of the country's leading winemakers, and he took a bit of persuading to allow me to barbie on his estate. Now here's a hot tip. One of the best ingredients for the perfect barbecue is without doubt a great location. And I think you'll agree that you can't get better than this. No wonder they call Australia God's great garden.
So, let's get cooking, and on the menu, Italian lamb patties and classic marinated steaks. What I've got here is a pound of mince meat, nice moist lamb mince there. I'm going to add to that one chopped red onion. Just chop it up fine. You don't need, really need to worry about it sort of being sort of finely chopped into equal pieces. I've also got one handful of basil there. Just sprinkle that in. Oh, look at that. And the smell of fresh basil is wonderful. And then I've got here a nice couple of cloves of garlic again. All of that goes inside. Oh, the neighbours will be smelling this over the fence, I tell you. I've got here about two ounces there of semi-sun-dried tomatoes. You can buy them at your supermarket or perhaps your, your deli. If you haven't got them semi-sun-dried, just pop them into your oven on a low tray there for you know overnight or something, very, very low oven. You can sun-dry them yourself. Now, I've also got here two ounces of pine nuts, toasted pine nuts, dry frying pan on the stove. Just let them sort of toss over there a little bit. Nice medium heat till they're nice and golden. Pop those inside. And here, I've got four ounces of hard goat cheese. It really smells lovely and out here in the valley they call it tom de chiv mate so i'm just going to shove it in my bowl there it is lovely look at that and over here one ounce of white breadcrumbs if you wanted to use brown you could but i'm using white so we'll shovel that in there like that and finally four ounces of shredded baby spinach just you can use all reese spinach if you want just chop it up nice and fine and pop that inside look at that and that looks delightful already all those lovely vibrant colours there. We're going to mix those together shortly, but first a nice bit of pepper there. Quite a bit of pepper because it's going to make quite a few little burgers up. You probably get 10, 12. It really depends on the size out of this quantity. All right, a good shaking of salt. <laughs> oh dear, lovely. That's it. And finally, two tablespoons of olive oil. Good quality olive oil if you wanted to. Just pour that in there like that. That's enough, lovely. And now comes the interesting part. Let your fingers get in there and have a good old rub-a-dub. And, and really work that in, really get it going there now. And you want to bind it together quite well here. It looks like it's going to sort of crack up, but really work that meat together. It's quite a robust burger, actually. Oh, that's it, lovely. Look at the colours there. Oh, it's so exciting, this. And then finally break off a bit like that and then make them up into a patty shape and really compress that together. Don't be frightened to give it a good squeeze. Cup your hands over and really give that a good squeeze. If you wanted to, you could put them inside a little ring, you know, one of those little metal rings or something like that, and shake them inside there. But I like to do it on my hands because sometimes when burgers are a little sort of odd shaped, they look quite nice, don't they? Especially if the kids help you, they're always odd shaped. <laughs> ah, lovely. Just look at that. Now your lamb patty should be cooking over medium coals for about 12 to 15 minutes until they're really nice and juicy. And now the simple marinade. Take one whole clove of garlic and just cut that in half all the way through there. Look at that. Pop that inside. That's it. Just press that down so it will soak up all that wine flavour. I've got some nice fresh thyme there. We're just going to rip that thyme like that. It really doesn't matter. Very nonchalant fashion. The same with the rosemary there. Fresh rosemary sprigs. Look, I just pull that off like that. And it all just separates beautifully over our lovely T-bone steaks. Now, inside here, my pesto malt, I've got some nice mixed peppercorns there. Just give that a good old grind up there. You now you don't need to worry too much about whether they're all broken up or not. Just give that a good blitz there like that. We're just going to take those and sprinkle them like that all over the top of our steaks. And a little drizzle there of olive oil. And now there's only one thing missing. Ainsley, Ainsley, I have just what you need here. Oh, fantastic, Brian. A lovely bottle of Hunter Valley Shiraz, bin 2000. Mm -hmm. Ainsley, this wine is made from the Shiraz grapes. Mm. And the Shiraz grapes have got lots of character and intensity. And that's what you need to accompany the meat and also the vegetables of the district that also have plenty of flavour to mm. them. And all the herbs and everything in there will complement it beautifully. Beautiful. Well, you need all that intensity. Thanks for bringing it, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be beautiful. Well, Brian, I think it's time for me to slap my hat on. And let's get those steaks on the barbie. Oh, make sure your coals are medium hot and those steaks will cook in about two or three minutes on each side. You'll get a nice medium steak, less for rear and a bit more for the well done.
You know, Ainsley, we've got the best beef here in Australia in the bloody world. Really? Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. I wonder if he knows this. Now, Brian, have you seen this before? How do you like your steak? Do you like it rare, medium, or well done? That is fantastic. I've never seen that done before. No, I tell you, we pommies know a thing or two, don't we? Nah, uh, that'll be the first <laughs> bloody time. <laughs> Everywhere you go. Fish Down Under are pretty spectacular too, with more than 100 species auctioned every day at Sydney's vast fish market. They claim to cook fish to perfection in the city that's known as the Paris of the Pacific. That's something to live up to, and there's no excuse to get it wrong, as the market boasts a seafood school where the teacher, Luke Mangan, is one of Aussie's top chefs. Check him out as he cooks Australia's famous fish delicacy, the barramundi. Okay, once the fish is boned out, you want to get the olive oil onto the grill. Nice, nice temperature. Season it well on both sides. Nice bit of sea bass or salmon trout. Ooh, good alternative. A little bit more olive oil. Once it's cooking there for a few minutes, golden brown, we turn it over to both sides. I'm going to take that off now to get a good colour on the skin. Be very gentle with it. That's actually three quarters cooked now, pretty much. We just give the grill a good clean down now, just to get any excess oil and, and fat off. So we get some clean olive oil onto the grill. Nice and hot, so it's slowly smoking away. We put onto the shiitake mushrooms. Sizzling away there, beautiful smell they're giving off. A Little bit of seasoning. Then we're getting nice colour on the mushrooms, nice golden brown. I'd use a bit of oyster mushrooms or something like uh, perhaps um, some chestnut mushrooms would be nice and soaked because the shiitake can be a little bit pricey. They're smelling beautiful. A little bit more salt will bring the flavour out. Once the Asian greens get into it, we'll get a baby moon bok. Oh dear, yeah, you don't have to go to the moon to get that. Why don't you fry in a bit of pak choy or savoy cabbage? That will do. Tossing that, just rip that up a little bit to get it sort of broken into shreds. Toss that through. Then we're getting into the baby tatsoi. We're doing the same with that. It's really coming together now. It's smoking well. It smells great. Don't worry. All you've got to do is use a bit of spring greens. Throw a handful of that in. Baby bok choy. Just tear it all up again. We're just wilting these leaves down to get the flavour through. A little bit more olive oil. There we go. So we'll just leave that settle there for a minute. Now we start on our sauce. Soy sauce. Beautiful. Ains, what do you reckon? You smell that, mate? Isn't that good? <laughs> huh? Magnificent. Move on to the mirin. The mirin's going to give a nice sweet flavour to the dish. That's quite sweet, so we put a bit of fish stock in that, so just to break that down as well. Just giving this a quick stir. Mixing. A bit of the crab now. A bit more salt. This is going to be magic, Ains, in here. This is really going to come together. So here we go with the everything into the into our sauce. Crab, shiitake, it's all glazing. I have a little taste of this. Mmm, <laughs> wonderful. And that's going to be beautiful in here. So what we're going to do now is just bring that over to our barramundi. Just give it a few scoops of the vegetables, the mushrooms, the crab, and we can see it. All the juices from the soy in the mirror. It's beautiful now. That's going to act as our sauce and our glaze for the fish. 
and we just finish it off with a little bit of the more mushrooms and greens on top and, and the mirror and that'll finish the dish off. It smells good and I know it's going to taste good because I cooked it. Ains, what do you reckon mate? Fair dinkum mate. But wait till you see my lobsters. And it couldn't be easier. Simply split and clean your lobster or get your fishmonger to do it for you. Sprinkle on some salt and freshly ground black pepper, drizzle over a little of your favourite olive oil and slap it straight onto your barbie. You just need to sear it over a high heat for about one or two minutes on each side. Oh, it's simply delicious. And the perfect accompaniment, flavoured butters to go with your lobster. Now, will you choose the caper, parsley and garlic butter? Ooh, or the orange, olive oil and chilli. Ah, oh, perhaps the tarragon shallot and white wine is right up your street. Oh, you lucky lot. And swill that luscious lobster down with a glass of chilled white wine. And now it's farewell with a fiery fruit flambe. Lying again Say you don't but then you do I'm trying again To build a wall around your heart Then break it through to you You make it happen Take two.